As Josh has said, these are times that we can care for each other. And that's what we want to do. Uh, It's also a time for us to stand upon the Word of God. And so uh, take your Bibles, and we are going to be in Psalms chapter 103. Psalms 103 today. And we're going to allow the Word to shape us and uh, kind of set us for the days to come. So we've already prayed, but let's pray again, okay? Heavenly Dad, thank you so very much that you made a way for Grow Point to be together today. Thank you that we could uh, come and worship you and um, dig into your word. And so um, we desire to grow today. In fact, the word that's coming to my mind is transformation. Uh, What currently is in our hearts, what's currently settled in our our minds, that things would be transformed today by your word. And we invite the Holy Spirit to teach us, to point his finger on certain things for us uh, personally uh, as followers of Jesus Christ, but collectively as a, a faith community of Grow Point today. Teach us. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to be in uh, Psalm 103, and uh, we're going to start in verse 1. Obviously, that's a good place to start. And it it reads this. We're going to be in the the New International Version, so if you have the ability to switch uh, on your smartphones or smart devices or whatever, you can go to the NIV. This is David um, writing Psalm 103, and he starts by saying, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Now, David is talking to himself here. I think it's important to to recognize that. Sometimes when we talk to ourselves, it's not always a good thing, right? Uh, Sometimes uh, we we get strange looks. But I know personally, I talk to myself, Uh, especially when I'm doing something that may be like a little silly or I make a silly mistake or I use that S, am I allowed to say stupid? A stupid mistake or whatever. And I say, oh, Todd, why did you do that? That was so obvious. we, We talk to ourselves, right? And David is talking to himself here. And look what he says. Oh, my soul, my innermost being. David is including every part of himself here. It's his body, it's his mind, it's his emotions, it's his will, it's his spirit, my innermost being, all that is within me. Listen, right? Everybody line up, right? What's that movie that uh, Disney came out with, that in and out or outside in? Inside out, okay, you can tell I'm a real, okay. You know, all... All of us are lining up here to hear what we have to say. Look look what David says in in verse 2. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Okay, I I know this is a little poetic here, but he's almost like, hey, don't anybody check out yet. (laughs) Okay, I'm talking to myself. Everybody listen. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. You know, I think it's so interesting that fear causes us to forget. Faith causes me to remember. But when there's a battle that that is raging within me, and and if we look at a little bit of the history of this psalm, we know that David is writing this, and there's, there's a little bit happening in his life. Things are not all smooth at this moment. And, and if you're familiar with his, uh, his life, you know that there were enemies that came against him and there were personal betrayals, uh, even in his own family, that, that caused such, such a difficulty in his life. And, and uh, there were choices that led to sins that led to very heart-wrenching consequences. And, and David is writing this during those times. It it is a very uncertain and tumultuous time. And he is saying, look, don't forget, soul, don't forget everything that's swirling around us. Don't forget 
God. And I think, I think this is so important for us right now because I think it, Josh said it earlier um, that it, when we were praying that um, oftentimes it's easy to remember <laughs> when the schedule's being kept and, and there's just minor hiccups and, and there's the, the normal things that we deal with. But then when we're hit with some very uh, difficult news, restrictions, um, polarizing perspectives, um, we can forget. And so I think this is very timely, what David is saying here. Don't forget who God is. And Grow Point, don't forget who God is. But then he, he starts listing them. So it's not just like, hey, self, you got it? Okay, we're good. No, he said, I got to make sure that we're fully understanding this. And so he begins to list it. And look at verse 3 there, the first part. It says, God who forgives all of your sins. Uh, look over to verse 8. Psalm 103 in verse 8. It reads this, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. He is slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always uh, a curse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Oh, man, he forgives our sins. It's important to remember this. I mean, this, this, this sometimes when we're in the, the church, uh, we, we throw it, oh, Jesus died for our sins, Jesus died for our sins. But we need to be reminded of the power that Jesus came. Um, I, was, I was thinking that... Um, in verse 8 and 9, it made me think of Lamentations uh, 3.23. It says, his mercies are new every morning. Uh, it made me think of, of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, where it says, he has lavished on us the riches of his grace. I mean, we could, we could take a whole sermon series and begin to just talk about being lavished with the riches of God's grace. And Colossians 2, 13 and 14 says this, we were dead in our sins, but we are now made alive in Christ Jesus. He took away our sins, nailed it to the cross, and canceled its power over us. I mean, we don't even have to do a whole lot of commentating today. It's just the word. David is saying, don't forget that God forgives our sins. Look at verse 3 again at the second part. He not only forgives our sins, but he heals all of our diseases. Okay, look over in verse 13. 103, verse 13. Jump down to verse 13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. For as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. Its place is remembered no more. Our God knows us, right? He knows that we struggle. He knows that we are weak. He knows that we have limits. He knows that we have failures. He knows that we are susceptible to, to sickness. He is familiar because he created us. He, he hasn't like suddenly forgotten that, oh, well, Okay, Josh, you have now become Pastor Josh, and you should. No, he knows us. And he, look at that verse, verse 13, he has compassion for 
us. I think that is so important for today, especially as we are facing this coronavirus, that we know that we have a God that can heal. We have a God that will have compassion. We can have confidence that he will answer us. And even if we get sick, our God can heal us. (laughs) He can bring us through. He knows and he is able to do that. Look at verse four. It says, who redeems your life from the pit. I love that. He redeems. We don't have time to jump into all of what that means, but he can bring us back. Okay? I think that's important now because there's a lot of people looking at their bank accounts and their retirement right now. And they're thinking, oh, I'm losing it all. Oh, what's going to happen? Our God can redeem us from the pit. He can bring it all back. And he's promised to supply for our needs. Look also in verse 4. It says, and he crowns you with love and compassion. Oh, I wish we could have a whole sermon just to talk about crowning. Picture this in your mind. God is adorning us. He is beautifying us. <laughs> he is making us precious and valuable. Adorning us with what? He is adorning us with his love and his compassion. Oh, man, if I, I you know, um, there's a lot of talk about um, you know, the hand sanitizer and, and all of those other kinds of things that would be good for, for our, our health. And yes, those are good things. Wash your hands, okay? Wherever you're, wash your hands, okay? But, oh, to be adorned with his love as though it were a crown being placed upon us. Can you hear David talking to himself, reminding him, oh, I know what is swirling around, but his love and his compassion crowns me. Look at also in verse five, it says, who satisfies your desires with good things. Write down Psalms 37, four. You can look at that later, right? He satisfies us with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, this is, this is Isaiah chapter 40, uh, verse 31, where it says, uh, those that wait upon the Lord shall have renewed strength. They shall... Um, uh, mount up as like, like wings uh, as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint, right? You know, the interesting thing about eagles is that throughout the entire lifespan of an eagle, they will continue to lose feathers and new feathers are, will, will replace them. Meaning, um, they're gonna be able to soar, <laughs> continuously oh oh, I lost uh, I lost the the tip of that one and and now you know I'm (laughs) you know you see that ego like what's up with that there's going to be a renewing process within the eagles and that's what that's what David is saying here oh what if I what if I use up all of my strength what if I use up all of my faith all of my hope What if all my supplies are used up? David is saying, don't forget that we have a God that will renew, that will supply, that will take care of us. Look at verse six. Let me file, file, yeah, verse six. Okay, so the Lord works righteousness and justice for all those that are oppressed. Verse seven, he made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. Look at that, the Lord does what? The Lord, it's a four letter word, work. The Lord works. You know what work is, right? (laughs) That's effort, that's strength, that's movement, that is oomph. I don't know how you spell that, but um, he works on our behalf. 
the oppressed, those treated unfairly, those he's going to bring justice. This is an important thing for us to have settled within our hearts because um, there's a lot of unfair things happening in our world. And we have a God that's working on our behalf. But I think it's interesting that while he's working, um, he's also making known. Okay, listen, I, I'm going to go work something for you guys. I'll be back. And he goes way off, and then, you know, kind of, you know, he's doing something back, and that nobody can see what, what's happening. No, the Lord wants to make known. It says the deeds were known before the people. But with Moses, he shared his ways with Moses. Now, we don't have time to, to fully unpack this verse. But there's one thing about watching God and seeing the things that he is doing. And then there's a deeper understanding when he shares his ways with you. The wise and the, the bigger picture and a closeness that comes. This is, this is what David is reminding himself and he's reminding us that God is not far off. He wants to come and be near and be close and to make known his ways. Uh, jump down to, um, to verse 17. It says, um, but from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. Here again, we're talking about not forgetting and we're talking about remembering. He is going to do what? He is going to bless those that follow him with his Love. We already see that the Lord is going to make it like a crown and adorn us with his love. But he's saying, you know what? I want to go a little, little bit further. I want to bless you with my love. You're going to love me? I'm going to love you. Me? Yes, you. Yeah, but wow. <laughs> okay, that's amazing. Uh, but I... I also love them. <laughs> I'm going to love them too. You're going to love me and them? Yes. I don't know if this is translating well. And, you know, well, I not only love them, but I love them. <laughs> you know, these are my children and these are my grandchildren. And God says this, I'm going to bless you with my love and I'm going to love your children and I'm going to love your grandchildren. And so all of these promises, I will do them not just for you, but I'm going to do them for those that you care about. Amen. Oh, I think this is an important thing for us to have settled again within our hearts, especially during this time, because we're concerned. We're concerned about our, our grandparents and our parents and our, our, our aunts and uncles and our children and our cousins and, and all of the extended families. But David is saying, don't forget, remember that if you are following God, if you, are, if you have in your heart that you want to walk according to his ways, we're not talking perfection here. We're not talking that you always, but in your heart you have it settled. Jesus is my Lord. God is saying, look, I'm going to love you and I'm going to love the ones that you love too. Amen. Look, at, look at verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. This, this is like, um, kind of like the, the, uh, the capstone. This is, this, is, this is really, David said, look, all of these other things that we are remembering, they are amazing. But only if God can deliver right? Um, only if he can come through. Only if he is going to be able to do it. And David says, our God is able. 
He has established his throne in heaven. His kingdom rules over all. Our God is supreme. He can do anything. He can do everything. Nothing is impossible for God. That's the words of Jesus, actually. So... Uh, you know, it would be in red in your Bibles and uh, if you're looking for that. But let that settle within your hearts that I, I don't have to fear. I don't have to, to, um, to worry, to fret, to be tossed to and fro by the, 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 the waves that are rocking our culture and our nation and, and the, the reports of the enemy and, and the misinformation and the rumors and all of these other things. I don't have to be shaken in this moment because my God is able. Amen. Wow. I mean, I can... Um, I can picture David in this moment. Like, maybe he started writing this when he was in bed with the covers. Like, I don't even want to get out of bed today, right? And he's just talking to himself. Probably the verse before this was like, okay, you got to get up. Okay, uh, it's, <laughs> it's two in the afternoon. It's time to get up. But I think that as David is remembering... <laughs> I can see him like sit up in bed, right? He stuffs the pillow behind him, right? And maybe he gets Indian style, right? He's now, he's, now he's writing and, and then he's, he's on the edge of the bed. <laughs> and I think of the progression, he is now walking in his room, you know? He's got a little swagger going on and, and he is building up his faith. This is important for us, church. <laughs> 1 John 4.18 says that God's perfect love will drive out all fear. How do we learn about God's perfect love? It is through his word. It is remembering Jesus. It is the things that we have just talked about, the, the, how this, this scripture is unfolding. It's allowing faith to rise within us. I think it's important to know that The circumstances surrounding David have not changed. Right? Sometimes our our following God is based on, okay, you better change it. When are you going to change it? Change it now. Why haven't you changed it? That's it. I'm out of here. Right? They that wait upon the Lord (laughs) shall have a renewed strength. Nothing has changed yet in David, and yet there has been a change, right? He's grown in his heart. He's grown in his mind. He's grown in his faith, and remembering who God is has brought a change to him in the middle of the circumstances, and that's what we need right now. Josh mentioned it, that we, would, that, that we the, the followers of Jesus Christ here in Lorraine County, that we would be um, beacons of hope. We would be bearers of light. We would, be, um, we would love people like Jesus would love people. That our faith would grow so that it becomes action. It becomes care. It becomes the same compassion that, 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 that David is speaking about here that God would have upon us that we have grown and changed that we are now having it on others. And so look at, look at verse, uh, verse 20. David is, it has, has remembered, he's gotten his faith. I believe he's strutting around his room at the moment and he is no longer talking to himself. Look who he's talking to. Praise the Lord, you angels, right? You mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all you heavenly hosts, you servants who do his will. You know what? Praise the Lord, all you works everywhere in his dominion. (laughs) He's gone from just speaking to himself to a point where he is now making declarations and he is declaring this everywhere. And this is gonna be us, Grow Point. This is going to be us during this time. 
that as faith arises within us, as we stand upon the Word of God and we declare that He is able, we will make declarations to our neighbors, to our family, to our coworkers, that this is not the end and that we don't have to give up, that God will bring us through how he ends it. I mean, I think he, he started very somber. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, everything that's within me, praise him. But I think he, he ends on that, he's, you know, amped up and they're, you know, the people in the palace were probably like, what's going on in there? Um, but I think he brings it back down there to verse 22 and he says, praise the Lord, oh my soul. It really speaks about positioning, right? Where am I gonna position myself in the midst of all that is swirling? Where will I position? And David said, look, I can't control this and that and all of that and I can't control it. But what I can control is my soul. And I will remember. It was interesting that um, as we were worshiping, Sam was led to, to thank the Lord that he would use us. I'm sure there are many that are crying out, oh, save us, God. But can we get our faith to a point where we believe God and say, God, make me a blessing? In this time, make me your blessing. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know uh, what interaction that it might take, what platform it, it, may, it may come about, but make me your blessing. You have adorned me. You have renewed me. You have strengthened me, and you are my forgiver and my healer and I will proclaim you to all. Every time that we gather together and we, we share the word, we, we grab our grow cards and, and it's a way for us to, to write down um, perhaps something that the Holy Spirit is sharing with us, a realization of something and and today on your screens, you will see a button there somewhere on your screen that says my response. Um, we want to encourage you to click that and use this time based on, on Psalm 103, what we have just walked through. Um, what is it? First, first of all, identify something that you're going through, something that is the storm around us. I mean, we are all... Um, walking this coronavirus out, as Josh said. We don't know what the next seven weeks are going to look like. And so we're all kind of in that. But you know, while we are walking this, there are some that are facing some other health situations. There are others that are facing some, some broken uh, relationships and, and like, where am I going to live? next week type things. Oftentimes when our culture is fixated on one particular um, storm or situation, all the other ones we tend to forget about. Those that are hungry, kids that are homeless, um, the brokenness. What's happening in your life right now that you would say, you know what, I, I need to identify, I need to write this down. This is surrounding me. But we're not just going to identify that. In light of Psalm 103, here's the question. 
What do you need to say to yourself today? What is it that you need to speak to yourself? What is it that your soul needs to hear your mouth say? This is the Word of God. We didn't write it. (laughs) He's given it to us. It says that He is not a liar or has double talk where He would say one thing and then mean another. These things that David has, has enlightened us with, God will do. Because it's part of his nature and it's part of his of who he is. In fact, in, in, in Hebrews chapter 6, it says that, that he would not have said it if he w- was not going to hold himself accountable to it. So based upon the word of what God has said, what do you need to speak to yourself today? Now we recognize that as this is our first live stream um, service that, um, you know, there there are always going to be some hiccups and and things like that. But we were also, we had the realization that um, this might go places that Uh, we've never been able to go before, perhaps into somebody's home or uh, on their smart device that we've not been able to connect with in the past. Can I take this opportunity to encourage you? If you don't know God in this way, if you may say, hey, I... I don't have, I'm not sure that I, I'm in right standing with God. I'm not sure that, that, um, that God would be saying these things to me. Today. Uh, today can be your day that you make it right with God. In fact, if we go back to, to, uh, to verse number six, it says, the Lord works righteousness We sang about it earlier that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because of Jesus, we become right with God. And it simply comes through the confessing of our sins, the surrendering of our hearts. If that's you today, I want to encourage you. There's no special, magical words that you have to say the Bible simply says if you believe it in your heart if you confess it with your mouth in fact this is Romans if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and that raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord you will be saved and so we want to encourage you Lord, Jesus, save me. I'm being rocked back and forth. Save me. Uh, You see my weakness, my failures. You are are not unfamiliar with me. You, You see it all. Will you save me today? And the Bible says this, that if we call upon the name of the Lord, we will be saved so I encourage you if you have done that today find that button that button respond here and let us let us know about it so that we can walk this out with you in faith there on the screen is also ways that you can uh, submit prayer requests uh, to the team even though we we may not be able to to physically be together We're going to walk this out in victory. Not because of sheer strength and and our determination, but because our God is so gracious and so good. And because we have Psalm 103 here. What is it that you need to say to yourself today? Will you pray with me? Heavenly Dad, we humble ourselves before you. 
what a scripture. It is so timely for us of all that we are facing. We surrender. We lay down the struggle. We resist the fear and we accept your love. When the voices and the opinions and the reports be, begin to, to overwhelm us, we will begin to listen to your word and begin to lift up praise before you. It's so interesting that that's what David, in, in trying to remind himself and growing his faith, he saw the importance of lifting up worship and praise to you. And so we're going to do the same. We recognize that, that this, is, this is a real thing for people. This is a growing moment for us. And so I thank you that you have compassion I thank you that you have grace and mercy in this moment, that your kindness is leading us to repentance, is leading us to a place of, a, a place of growth. Thank you. We give thanks for Jesus and all that he has done to make this possible. For those that are, that are, are entering into a, a brand new relationship with you today, we thank you for them. We ask that you would just bless them and that they would, would sense your presence about them and that their faith would grow during this time. For all of Grow Point, that your word would, would just become the bedrock of what we stand upon. Every decision we make, it'd be, it'd be filtered through the Word. Every thought that we have, it would be shaped by the Word. And that our mouths will not speak cursing, and our mouths won't speak negative, but our mouths will sing the praises of our God and declare how great you are. All of the things that we have read in Psalm 103, that that will be what flows out of our lives. We love you, Lord. We thank you again. And this we pray, Heavenly Dad, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.